The publishing industry worldwide is mostly male dominated and women writers have struggled for centuries to make themselves heard. Today, feminist publishing is making its own space in the mainstream publishing world and starting important conversations on gender, women's issues and key feminist causes. So what is the history of feminist publishing? Today in the Feminist Archive, we take a look. Feminist publishing is not just simply about marketing its titles to women and men, but it's the active practice of publishing titles that are feminist in aim, scope and objective to its readers. Feminist publishing also aims at foregrounding women's voices, rescuing from oblivion writers who have been forgotten. In India, the feminist publishing houses specialize in women's issues, advance feminist causes, and print academic, fiction, memoirs, and non-fiction work by women. Recognizing and supporting women's causes, publishing houses such as Kali for Women, Zuban Women Unlimited, Tara Books, Tulika Books, Sri Samaya, Samyukta India series, and Asmita among others, have been trailblazers in feminist publishing. It's important to understand the history of feminist publishing press to understand how it exists in a sort of a dynamic tension with the commercial space of the marketplace. How did it all start? How does feminist publishing navigate progressive politics while simultaneously striving to achieve business profitability? The first attempt to start a publishing press by women and for women was made on March 26, 1860, when the Victoria Press was started by Emily Faithful along with other activists in London. Exactly a hundred years later, Virago Press was founded by Carmen Kalil in London. Virago Press committed to publishing women's writings and books on feminism, feminist themes, topics and subjects. It became a pioneer in the field. In 1970, Florence Howe founded the Feminist Press. India's answer to Virago Press and the Feminist Press came in 1984 with the founding of the hugely influential feminist publishing house, Kali for Women. Writing on the waves of the women's rights movement of the 1980s in India, Kali for Women was founded by two equally dynamic feminists, publisher Urvashi Butalia and scholar Ritu Menon. Both transformed the field of publishing in India by bringing to the forefront the neglected voices of women through academic publishing and activist works, translations and fiction. Kali for Women published some path-breaking books mostly in English but also took on radical publishing in the regional languages of India such as the Hindi reference book Shadeer Ki Jankari. The book was written by 75 village women from Rajasthan and sold by them at a special price in the villages. Sharir Ki Jankari was extremely frank about sex and women's bodies, including issues such as menstrual taboos, shocking some commentators and breaking the boundaries between academic publishing for niche market and mass literature. Kali for Women acknowledged that by publishing primarily in English from Delhi, it was constrained by class, language and location. However, by publishing a radical book like Sharir Ki Jankari, it made a conscious effort to bring out the voices of marginalized women and help them be heard. Committed to social change, Kali for Women went on to publish works which are considered essential reading for an understanding of women's movement, ecofeminism, gender and colonialism in South Asia, including Radha Kumar's hugely influential The History of Doing, Vandana Shiva's book Staying Alive, Kumkum Sangari and Sudesh Ved's landmark volume Recasting Women, Essays in Colonial History, and the English translation of Karatelein Heather's magnum opus Akkadarya. After running Kali for Women for nearly two decades, the duo split in 2003 and two new publishing houses came out of it, Butalia Zuban Publishers and Menon's Women Unlimited. Both continue to publish groundbreaking work on feminism. Feminist publishing has spawned several other important publishing houses which have made their mark on the Indian feminist publishing scene. Sri Samaya, Tara Books, Tulika Books, Asmita, Samyukta India Press have engaged vibrantly and furiously with feminist issues both in adult literature as well as young adult fiction and children's literature. Feminist publications are a significant aspect of feminist activism. Most feminist publishing grew out of women's movements. The movement identified knowledge as one of the tools for the struggle for claiming space. The feminist publishing houses exposed the biases of the literary tradition while expanding their boundaries to include many more women writers. 
by publishing groundbreaking work, bringing silent voices to the fore, tearing down the veil of taboo, translating Indian literature by women, expanding the area of feminist activism by moving beyond India to include South and West Asia, these publishers should be credited for generating significant amount of attention around women's issues and women's struggle for gender justice and equal rights. Feminist publishing has helped us discover our own voices and amplify those that have been historically silenced. Feminist publishing also democratized knowledge, construction and epistemology by bringing in perceptions and perspectives of the historically neglected and silenced voices and help everyone to see the world through a feminist lens. Feminist publishing is good for all of us and it is here to stay.